The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Doctor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa How are you? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, inshallah, you had a good week? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa shukr. So, um, we were left at Sayyida Khadija alayhi salam. Uh, it was very uh, beautiful um, to go through um, a bit of her um, lifetime and get to know more of this great personality. Um, inshallah, we um, I wanted to discuss the, the subject of marriage. How... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treated Sayyidah Khadija as his wife. Uh, the reason is because there's a lot of misconceptions um, today in the Islamic Ummah with regards to how a Muslim man, a Mu'min should treat his wife. Unfortunately, a lot of cultures and misconceptions are attributed through because of us, through times they get attached to our religion and we need to learn to separate certain things because unfortunately others if they want to you know find look for faults to point and generalizing that Islam is bad we want to prove them wrong we want to say listen you for example you state that Islam is nothing but a religion of violence and hatred we say the opposite and we prove it also with regards to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam, as a married man what was his um, adab, his mannerisms? How did he treat Sayyida Khadija as a man? What did he expect from her as a wife? Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin al-masumin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil faraja. Allahumma ajjil. Of course, there is no misconception as far as the the treatment of a husband, you say there is misconception, of course there isn't at all uh, any misconception as far as treating uh, the treatment of uh, husband and wife, uh, how the husband should treat the wife or how the wife should treat the husband. Uh, uh, it's uh, very clear. Um, if uh, there are things which go wrong or um, individuals uh, misbehave, uh, then that, that's a different issue. Uh, but uh, as far as the duties and uh, conduct of mm -hmm. the husband towards the wife, mm -hmm. treatment of the husband towards the wife and vice versa, the wife towards the husband, uh, is very clear. Islam stresses uh, uh, um, a lot on this issue, um, the issue of uh, the treatment and uh, good behavior towards one another between the husband and the wife. and. Um, uh, stresses on forgiveness uh, between them. If one errs or makes mistake or uh, behave in a certain manner which is not desirable, then the other party should uh, forgive and forego and forget and uh, uh, to help uh, um, you know make life happy between uh, between them, uh, and which is as I said achieved through forgiveness. Um, as far as the um, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi is concerned, and um, uh, his marriage uh, with the Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam, um, it is very clear that uh, they had a um, very happy life together, um, and uh, in fact, you can. Uh, the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was known for his uh, 
um, good manners, for his honesty and truthfulness, um, and uh, and uh, indeed, uh, say the Khadija is well known uh, that addresses the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before marriage. She says, "Ibn Am, um, I I desire to marry you for your um, for your honor." Um, um, for your truthfulness, for your honesty, and for your good manners. So the Prophet ﷺ was renowned for his manners, for his good manners, um, and renowned for his honesty and truthfulness. Uh, apart from the fact that he had a, uh, his status was good in the sense that he was from the tribe of uh, uh, Bani Hashim, uh, which was uh, uh, highly honored amongst, uh, uh, amongst Quraysh. And um, his father was Abdullah, was highly respected. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, he was the head of, uh, if you like, Bani Hashim at his time. He was the chief of the tribe. Uh, so apart from this status, the, the, the manners and conduct of this particular individual amongst the clan of Bani Hashim, that is uh, the, uh, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, uh, uh, was outstanding. And, um, and Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam said that it's because of these qualities, these traits, uh, I want to marry you. Um, so but as a man, sorry, doctor, as a, as a, as a married man, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam If I could see him today With my own eyes What would I expect Would I expect uh, a man that would go home And demand his wife to have the food ready on the table Would, uh, would, would I see a man that expect his wife To have everything clean And her to um, listen and obey him Without questioning Or would I see a man that actually doesn't um ex that doesn't um how can i put it in words that does not expect all these things from his wife that he would actually acknowledge that uh whatever his wife would do for him she would do it not because of obligation but because of the love and respect for him do you understand what i'm trying yes. to go i just um, wanted to exploit exploit the uh, the idea of marriage how, how can we today benefit from it? Because I see uh, as well in our communities that we may not necessarily be picking up these teachings from our whole No, uh, generally a lot of people do pick up on the teachings of the Prophet um, um, There may be minor, minority of cases where uh, things like this uh, may happen, but uh, it, it certainly is not the duty of the uh, wife to do the things that you mentioned. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu has stressed, and he used to uh, help with um, all the duties and help his wife uh, uh, with uh, whatever was necessary to be done. So th there was no expectation uh, the Prophet Sallallahu did uh, towards his, uh, uh, his wife, Sayyidah Khadija alayhi and, um, uh, and because of, he continued to, to uh, behave uh, in the same manner that he was uh, uh, famous for. Uh, he was renowned for his good manners, uh, for truthful and honesty, and he continued in that way. And we don't have any report uh, uh, to say that he was he acted to, uh, in the contrary. Uh, so yes, they, 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 they say the Khadija knew he whom he, who he was. Uh, given the conducts and given what he had, she had heard uh, about him. Um, uh, we'll come into that, uh, inshallah, later on about what, in, in, de in details as to what she'd heard about him and, and why there were a lot of, if you like, uh, notable individuals uh, seeking marriage, uh, seeking her hands in marriage, uh, say the Khadija's hands, but she used to refuse. And uh, whereas in this case, in the case of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, who, uh, if you like, in terms of wealth, he didn't have a lot of wealth, mm. um, and he was an orphan, uh, 
but despite that she approached him and she sought marriage and in previous episode we did talk about um, she she used different individuals she used to send messages like uh, the aunt of the prophet uh, said uh, said the safiya mm. and um, others and to help facilitate this uh, to m arrange for this marriage um, so she knew whom she, she was talking about and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued in that manner uh, and he behaved uh, according to the, um, he ba basically practiced what he preached um, according to his teachings. Um, inshallah, we'll come into that. And but the important thing is that this marriage continued until, if you like, uh, when he was uh, uh, sent as a officially as a prophet, uh, and he, he announced his mission of uh, the mission of the prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The concern, the reason why I wanted to stress this out is because um, it's, it's a bit stressful how we have the best of examples and it's crucial for us to always go back, always refer to Ahlul Bayt and our Holy Prophet with regards to um, how we can behave in society within friends, uh, family, um, how to behave with our enemies as well. Um, and generally, I just wanted to touch this so we could derive some useful... Basically, at the end of the day, what I wanted to say is that from my personal observation um, is that a lot of problems within our, our communities can be solved if only we went back and learned from Ahlul Bayt So that, 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 that's all uh, what I had to say about that. And um, inshallah, we were talking about the early days of... Um, the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you've mentioned that in the beginning it was only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Amir al-Mu'mineen and Sayyidah Khadija alayhum salam and who followed afterwards who embraced Islam after in the early in the beginning in the early stages before the declaration of the prophethood who was with the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam well, when um, when the uh, Prophet was sent uh, uh, um, uh, as a, um, he saw he met uh, Jibrail uh, salam, and he made a de declaration. Um, yes, the, the the people who believed in him was Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, and this went on for a long time, uh, for a long time. It's probably for, for about three years. Um, but uh, um, there are a number of points which need to be addressed. Uh, 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 and uh, of course, there are, if you like, misconceptions here in the sense that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa um, uh, met um, Archangel Gabriel in Angar Hara, he, uh, he was uh, confused, he was uh, uh, scared and things like this. Uh, of course, all of these are not uh, correct. And uh, before, um, as part of the, the marriage of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Sayyidah Khadija Alaihi Wasallam, um, she knew that he will be a prophet. As I mentioned uh, in the previous episode, that on the first day uh, of their um, marriage, or during the uh, marriage ceremony indeed, uh, she announced that she is uh, uh, giving her entire wealth and uh, property uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, this was at the age of 25, so this was about 15 years before, before they start, before the mission of prophethood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she knew what she was doing. And uh, she did say to him on the first day after the marriage, that uh, when uh, you are, if you like, officially declared as a prophet, when the prophet comes to you, um, I would like you to remember one thing, and that is to pray for me. And I hope that you would not forget, which uh, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, of course I would not forget, and I will do that. And of course he did. He, always, he, he prayed for her and continued to pray for her long after her death. Uh, even to the last days, up to the last days of her, of his life. Um, <clears throat> um, so, 
شینیو that he is going to be a prophet uh, and it was well known amongst the people in the know if you like the people who were after these things uh, that he would be a prophet uh, 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 and indeed uh, we have Christian and Jewish scholars who were either in Medina or Mecca and uh, they knew they used to, they have said to various individuals whether Abdul Muttalib whether Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet, uh, or what the Sayyidah Khadija, uh, and various others, they have pointed out that this young man um, will be a prophet of this nation, of these people, of the time, of the end of the time. Um, it, it was well known, and he, um, Sayyidah Khadija, knew that. In fact, we have reports that uh, even before her marriage um, to the Prophet Sallallahu uh, so you're talking about in his teens or probably um, early 20s because he was 25 when uh, they, they were both 25 when they married um, we have reports that Waraqa bin Nawfal, the cousin of Sayyidah Khadija he was an old cousin and he was Christian scholar uh, he was following the uh, religion of uh, at least the, according to the Sharia and the teachings of Jesus uh, salam, ala wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi salam. and um, he used to tell Sayyidah Khadija that this young man is going to be a prophet in fact in one report it says that this is the man we've been waiting for we meaning um, uh, the scholars at least if not the um, the Jews and scholars who had come, the Jews and Christians who had come, who had gathered. Uh, in fact, we have reports that the Jews came like hundreds of years before. They, they, they came to Mecca and Medina in search of and in waiting for the prophet, the, the forthcoming prophet. They knew they had it in their books uh, and they had it in their works. And uh, so they've been waiting for him. And when they saw him as a young man, they spotted him and they said, he is going to be uh, the Prophet. It, was, it happened in Mecca, it happened in Medina, it happened in the Levant, in the uh, in Sham, um, uh, when scholars, uh, Jewish or Christian scholars, saw him when he was on, the tr on business trip with his uncle Abu Talib, alayhim as um, When they saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, they said, this guy is going to be a Prophet. This young man is going to be a prophet. The point I want to say is that when everyone else knew, at least the people in the know, the, the scholars, the Jews, Jewish and uh, Christian scholars, he was certainly would know that he is going to be a prophet. Um, and um, of course, had um, um, said, uh, chosen some verses from the Quran. Uh, that um, basically explains and highlights the tradition, if like the system, how, how it works. Mm. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in general, it says that when, this is ayah number three, uh, sorry, ayah uh, number 81 of Surah Al-Imran, Surah number three, ayah 81. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ When Allah takes the covenant, uh, uh, he, he made covenants with the with his uh, with the prophets that he dispatched. Uh, he says, "I give you the book and wisdom, or I give you a book and wisdom." And as, in as much as when an, another prophet comes, um, you will endorse him, you will uh, uh, support him, you will believe in him and support him. So. The system works like this, is that one prophet will tell his people that there will be another prophet uh, coming. These are the, his, his qualities, these are his signs. Um, and uh, Allah took a promise from the prophets that when a, a, a new prophet comes and if you're alive, you, you should support him, you should believe in him. And he took that promise and they agreed according to this ayah. لما أتيتكم من كتاب وحكمة ثم جاءكم رسول مصدق لما معكم 
لا تؤمنون به ولا تنصرونه قال اقررتم واخذتم على ذلك مصري قالوا اقررنا so that when a new prophet comes you believe in him and you support him and do you agree to that and they said we do agree uh, so this is a general principle if you like uh, as far as the prophets are concerned so um, and in the case of the prophet of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, again that is mentioned uh, to the according to the ayah of the quran this one is uh, surah al imran ayah 187 um, it says وَإِذَا أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَا تُبَيُّنَنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَهُ That Allah uh, made a covenant with the people who, people of the book. Okay, that you must make it known to the, to the masses, to the people. And you may not hide it. But unfortunately, فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ But they cast it behind their backs. Um, so they were, they were aware that this Prophet Muhammad is going to come. It was well known to them, um, the signs and the qualities and the marks and so on. In الذين, uh, in, in ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 146, الذين أتيناهم الكتابة يعرفونه كما يعرفون أبناءهم. The people of the book, those who, were, who, were, who have been given the book, they recognize him just as they recognize their sons. يعرفونه كما يعرفون أبناءهم. وإن فريق منهم لا يكتبون الحق وهم يعلمون. But uh, a group of them, uh, they will con surely conceal the truth while they know what they're doing. They know the, they know the truth. Um, so, in the case of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the Jewish scholars, the Christian scholars in Mecca, Medina, uh, they identified him, they spotted him, and they did say to his relative, to Abu Talib, to Sayyidah Khadija, to uh, Abdul Muttalib, uh, that he will be a prophet. Now obviously, uh, Abu Talib السلام, already knew. He didn't need anyone to tell him, correct? Yes, but I'm, oh, no, the point is, uh, the point is that um, it was wider than just Abu Talib knowing. The point is that um, other scholars, scholars from other religions, they all at that at that time they also knew, or at least before they even recognized before. the signs. Uh, they, the physical? they they did they did say that he is going to be the prophet. The, po the point I'm trying to make is that mm. the point I'm trying to make is that, that if all around him knew, mm. surely he knows too. Okay, yes. and the whole point is that this issue that he he was <coughs> unfortunately we have it in if you like Sunni references that he was scared, he um, he, he wanted to commit suicide, and um, no. he wasn't sure. He went to say the Khadija, his wife, alayhi salam, and he told her. And then she went and asked her cousin, mm. is this the case? Is this true? Mm. Um, so this is completely wrong, okay. really. So um, this, with, with regard to the incident of the cave, this wh what happened in the cave? Yeah. That, that, that's uh, my understanding where we're trying to get to, that yeah. what's been said about what happened in the cave when the Archangel, um, Archangel Gabriel, yeah. alayhi salam, um, Nazala, what's the word? In, sorry, revealed. Re revealed, basically, um, the commandment from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, uh, before we go into the the event of the cave, I just wanted to understand um, what's so unique about caves, because throughout um, time, uh, there's all sorts of um, lots of prophets, peace be upon them, that always seek a cave. Is it because the cave provides uh, shelter, but a form of security? Is it because they want that, um, um, what's the word, um, not loneliness, um, solitude? They, they, they like the solitude when it comes to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, what is it so unique about caves that a lot of um, prophets, peace be upon them, were We've heard from narrations that they may be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in caves, spending time in caves. Well, as you mentioned, it's, it's a solitude and the seclusion. They okay. want to sort of concentrate on prayer and so on okay. and so forth. Uh, if I may just continue with the, with the verses from the Qur'an, uh, which um, address the issue of the people knowing the forthcoming Prophet. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We have another verse in the Qur'an. Um, 
for example, again, <coughs> verse number uh, 7, Ayah 157, sorry, uh, Surah number 7, Ayah 157. الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذين يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل. Uh, those who follow the the messenger, uh, the Meccan uh, prophet, um, the, <coughs> uh, whom they found mentioned or written down in their works, uh, in their books, uh, in the Torah and the Injil. Uh, so it is uh, clear mm. Allah is mentioning this and of course it is uh, mentioned uh, although there have been, there've been changes made and so on <coughs> changes to the scriptures to the to the yeah to the scriptures so if that's you like why the I can't Angel, find it today. Angel. Can I find it? You can today? find the traces. They they reveal it as the comforter and they translate it as the comforter for example or the Paracletus. Um, um, what do you mean, it's sorry, can you kind of clarify? That the comforter will come. I must go, that Jesus says, um, that I must go so that the comforter will come. Um, by the comforter is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa um, We have another verse in the Quran. Uh, um, it's Surah 61, Ayah 6, which says, يأتي من بعد اسمه أحمد فلما جاءهم بالبينات قالوا قالوا هذا سحر مبين um, and when Jesus son of Mary said O children of Israel I am the messenger of Allah to you confirming the law um, uh, which came before me and giving glad tidings of a, of a messenger to come after me whose name shall be Ahmed but when he came to them uh, with clear signs, they said, this is sorcery, this is magic. So they, they, they refuse him. Um, so the point is, it was mentioned uh, and it was made clear uh, beforehand mm -hmm. uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi will, will, will come. And Jewish scholars and Christian scholars knew that. And amongst that, also other people, as I said, <coughs> the fact that Sayyida Khadija, uh, sorry, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Waraqa bin Nofal, the cousin, the old cousin of Sayyida Khadija, well before her marriage to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, alayhi wa said that he will be a prophet. Muhammad uh, will be a prophet. Because uh, if you like, at that time, Muhammad was working with her on her trade, mm -hmm. on her business, um, trading with uh, Sham in Syria. So... He, he, well, he called the attention of Waraqa bin Nofal, and Waraqa bin Nofal advised uh, Sayyidah Khadija, uh, informed Sayyidah Khadija about this. So it was well known. If everyone else knew, then he would, okay. he would know it. So yeah. we've made it void, basically, that what they claim that the Holy Prophet wasallam was an ordinary man living an ordinary life, and one day out of the uh, b blue sky, uh, Archangel Ascent. comes and tells him, oh, from now on, you're a prophet. Mm. And this is void because clearly the Holy Quran states that uh, Jews, uh, Ahlul Kitab, Christians and Jews have been warned from before. And the scholars had, uh, they were very clear, they knew that this, uh, because it's their work, they are investigating and teaching and so on. Okay. The Jewish and Christian scholars at that time mm. <coughs> knew very well that uh, about the Prophet uh, Muhammad, forthcoming prophet. Okay. Yeah. It would also be very interesting to see uh, the different angles that school of thoughts in Islam have regarding the personality and um, the um, the figure of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. With regards, for example, uh, one of the very famous ones between um, the two main school of thoughts, uh, um, Ahlul Sunnah and um, the Shia, is regarding Asma infallibility. That inshallah would like to cover inshallah, regarding. Yes. What is infallibility and why do the holy prophets and the imams alayhum salam need to be infallible? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put in charge uh, of the prophet uh, from the time of his weaning the greatest of his malaika and he was with him 
all the time, day and night. And he used to uh, show him the, uh, uh, the good manners. Mm -hmm. 